The Phantom Tollbooth, Chapter 3, Welcome to Digitopolis. Dictionopolis, sorry. You must excuse my gruff conduct, the wash dog said after they'd been driving for some time. But you see, I forgot my dog voice, but you see it's traditional for watchdogs to be ferocious. Milo was so relieved at having escaped the doldrums that he assured the dog that he bore him no ill will and in fact was very grateful for the assistance. Splendid, shouted the watchdog. I'm very pleased. I'm sure we'll be great friends for the rest of the trip. You can call me Talk, T-O-C-K. Make sure you add Talk to your list of characters. That is a strange name for a dog who goes tick, 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 tick all day, said Milo. Why didn't they call you? Don't say it, gasped the dog. And Milo could see tears well up in his eyes. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, said Milo, not meaning to hurt his feelings. That's all right, said the dog, getting a hold of himself. It's an old story and a sad one, but I can tell it to you now. When my brother was born, the first pup in the family, my parents were overjoyed and immediately named him Tick on expectation of the sound they were sure he'd make. On first winding him up, they discovered to their horror that instead of going tick, 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 he went talk, 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 talk. They rushed to the Hall of Records to change the name, but too late. It had already been officially inscribed and nothing could be done. When I arrived, they were determined not to make the same mistake twice. And since it seemed logical that all their children would make the same sound, they named me Talk. Of course, you know the rest of the story. My brother's called Tick because he goes talk, talk, talk. And I'm called Talk because I go tick, 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 tick. And both of us are forever burdened with the wrong names. My parents were so overwrought that they gave up having any more children and devoted their lives to doing good work among the poor and hungry. But how did you become a watchdog, interjected Milo, hoping to change the subject, as Talk was sobbing quite loudly now. That, he said, rubbing a paw in his eye, is all so traditional. My family have always been watchdogs from father to son, almost since time began. You see, he continued, beginning to feel better. Once there was no time at all, and people found it very inconvenient. They never knew whether they were eating lunch or dinner, and they were always missing trains. So time was invented to help them keep track of the day and get places when they should. When they began to count all the time that was available, what with 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour and 24 hours in a day and 365 days in a year, it seemed as if there was much more than they could ever be used. If there's so much of it, it couldn't be very valuable was the general opinion and it soon fell into disrepute. People started wasting time and even gave it away. Then they were given the job of seeing that no one wasted time again. Oh, we were given the job of seeing that no one wasted time again, he said, sitting up proudly. It's hard work, but a noble calling. For you see, and now he was standing on his seat, one foot on the windshield, shouting with his arms outstretched. It is our most valuable possession, more precious than diamonds. Time marches on and tide it and tide wait for no man and at that point in the speech the car hit a bump and the watchdog collapsed in a heap on the front seat with his alarm ringing furiously ring 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 are you all right shouted milo um grunted talk sorry to get carried away but i think you get the point as they drove along talk continued to explain the importance of time quoting the old philosophers and poets and illustrating each point with gestures that brought him perilously close to tumbling headlong from the speeding automobile. Before long, they saw in the distance the towers and flags of Dictionopolis sparkling in the sunshine. Here's Dictionopolis. Cool. And in a few moments, they reached the Great Wall and stood at the gateway to the city. Ahem, roared the gate man, clearing his throat and snapping smartly to attention. Ah, we have the gate man now. This is Dictionopolis, a happy kingdom, advantageously located in the foothills of confusion and caressed by gentle breezes from the sea of knowledge. Today, by royal proclamation, is market day. Have you come to buy or sell? I beg your pardon, said Milo. Buy or sell, buy or sell, repeated the gate man impatiently. Which is it? You must have come here for a reason. Well, I, Milo began, come now, if you don't have a reason, you must at least have an explanation or certainly an excuse, interrupted the gate man. Milo shook his head. 
very serious, very serious, the gate man said, shaking his head also. You can't get in without a reason. He thought for a moment and then continued. Wait a minute, maybe I have an old one you can use. He took a battered suitcase from the gatehouse and began to rummage busily through it, mumbling to himself, no, 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 this won't do, this won't do. Ah, this is fine, he cried triumphantly, holding up a small medallion on a chain. That's like a, a little necklace thing. He dusted it off and engraved on one side were the words, why not? <laughs> There's a reason, why not? That's a good reason for almost anything. And here's our picture of our gate man who gave him the medal that gave him a reason, why not? Perhaps, but still quite serviceable. And with that, he placed it around Milo's neck, pushed back the heavy iron gate, bowed low and motioned them into the city. I wonder what the market will be like, thought Milo as they drove through the gate. But before there was time for an answer, they had driven into an immense square crowded with long lines of stalls heaped with merchandise and decorated uh, with a large banner that proclaimed, welcome to the word market, W-O-R-D. And from across the square, five very tall, thin gentlemen, regally dressed in silks and satins, plumed hats and buckled shoes, unrolled a parchment, parchment and began taking turns. And I think these guys are kind of like the synonym guys. They say everything um, using the same words or the words with the same meaning. Uh oh, uh, let's see here. Greetings, salutations, welcome, good afternoon, hello. Milo nodded his head and they went on reading from their scrolls. By order of Aziz the Unbridged, King of Dictionopolis, Monarch of Letters, Emperor of Praises, Sentences, and Miscellaneous Figures of Speech, we offer you the hospitality of our kingdom, country, nation, state, commonwealth, realm, empire, palatinate, principality. Don't all those words mean the same thing, gasped Milo? Of course, certainly, precisely, exactly, yes, they replied in order. So these guys all say things that mean the same thing, which are synonyms. Well then, said Milo, not understanding why each one said the same thing in a slightly different way. Wouldn't it be simpler to use just one? It would certainly make more sense. Nonsense, ridiculous, fantastic, absurd, bosh, they chorused again and continued. We're not interested in making sense. It's not our job, scolded the first. Besides, explained the second, one word is as good as another, so why not use them all? Then you don't have to choose which one is right, advised the third. Besides, sighed the fourth, if one is right, then 10 are 10 times as right. Obviously, you don't know who we are, sneered the fifth, and they presented themselves one by one. I am the Duke of Definition. He is the Minister of Meaning. Here is the Earl of Essence the Count of Connotation, and the Undersecretary of Understanding. Milo acknowledged the introduction and this talk growled softly, the minister explained. We are the king's advisors, or in more formal terms, his cabinet. Cabinet, recited the Duke, a small private room or closet case with drawers for keeping valuables, a council room for chief ministers of state. He was reading the definition from the dictionary in Dictionopolis. You see, continued the minister bowing thankfully to the Duke, Dictionopolis is the place where all the words in the world come from. They're grown right here in our orchards. I didn't know that words grew on trees, said Milo. Where did you think they grew, shouted the Earl irritably. A small crowd began to gather to see the little boy who didn't know that letters grew on trees. I didn't know they grew at all, admitted Milo even more timidly. Several people shook their heads sadly. Well, money doesn't grow on trees, does it, demanded the Count. I've heard not, said Milo. Then something must, why not words, exclaimed the undersecretary triumphantly. The crowd cheered his display of logic and continued about its business. To continue, continued the minister impatiently, once a week by royal proclamation, the word market is held here in the great square and people come from everywhere to buy the words they need or trade in the words they haven't used. Our job, said the count, is to see that all the words sold are proper ones, for it wouldn't do to sell someone a word that had no meaning or didn't exist at all. For instance, if you bought a word like glipsts, which is G-L, this word, G-L-D, no, B-T-S-K, where would you use it? It would be difficult, thought Milo, but there were so many words that were difficult, he hardly knew any of them. But we never choose which ones to use, explained the Earl as they walked toward the market stalls. For us, as long as they mean what they mean to mean, we don't care if they make sense or nonsense. 
innocence or magnificence out of the count. That seems simple enough, said Nyla, trying to be polite. Easy as falling off a log, said the Earl, falling off a log with a loud thump. Must you be so clumsy, shouted the Duke. All I said was, began the Earl rubbing his head, and here he is falling off a log. <laughs> We heard you, said the minister angrily, and you'll have to find an expression that's less dangerous. The Earl dusted himself off as the other snickered audibly. You see, cautioned the Count, you must pick your words very carefully and be sure to say just what you intend to say. And now we must leave to make preparations for the royal banquet. You'll be there, of course, added the minister. But before Milo had a chance to say anything, they were rushing off across the square as fast as they'd come. Enjoy yourself at the market, shouted back the undersecretary. Market, recited the Duke, an open space or covered building in which, and that was the last Milo heard as they disappeared into the crowd. I never knew words could be so confusing, Milo said to talk as he bent down to scratch the dog's ear. Only when you use a lot to say a little, answered talk. Milo thought this was quite the wisest thing he'd heard all day. Come, he shouted. Let's see the market. It looks very exciting. So we've met a few new characters, nobody very major, so don't worry too much about that. But we are now in Dictionopolis. So if you look back at the map on the slideshow, you'll be able to find where we're at. All right, have a great day.